Can you? Oh, you got headphones on. You can. You can concentrate. Yeah. You How can. did that head rip through that? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, Bethesda announced their first ever E3 conference, taking the place of Konami, I guess, who has been long deposed ever since their awesome Rock Revolution performance. Look that up if you haven't seen it. Um, so we're back up. Uh, E3 seems to be on the rise. It seems to be falling for a while. But the question is, I guess Bethesda feels like they have enough titles to warrant a, uh, a conference now. This is their very first E3 conference. Yeah. So exciting. Uh, it's not going to be a lot. I think it is exciting. Yeah. Uh, it. it you know, there's a whole lot of commentary you could be made there about, like, people think the triple A song. Oh, man, look at profile. No, no, it has to go straight down. Strong like, profile. You, you people want more of this? Yeah. Strong profile, yeah. There, that's good. <laughs> that's a power nose. It looks like when you see a bus of Julius Caesar. Oh, yeah. Like, ah, Julius Caesar. So, uh, yeah, we, we don't know what Bethesda Game Studio... No, sorry, Bethesda Softworks, Softworks is yeah. their first party developer too. We don't know what they're doing, uh, but they've spent an awful long time doing it, so... Well, they... they okay, just to be clear, too, they've done press conferences before um, at QuickCon. Oh, yes, well, that is that has become the press conference. E3 press conference. Correct, so that, that's kind of why this is a big deal. That's yeah. really, last year they announced Doom 5. Or Doom they now. showed it for the first time at yeah. QuickCon last year, yeah. Was it Doom 4? It, uh, so it was Doom 4, now it's just Doom. But it was announced at E3, so it seems like they're doing... Big... I think it was actually unveiled at QuickCon. I could be wrong about that. I swear we saw... Or maybe it was unveiled, but we saw the trailer at E3. Yeah, no, I, I, think, no, I, I, I remember looking at it on our phone. Yes, you're, right. you're, you're right. Yes. Like, cool, the dragon. Or... I remember because I was, I was at the QuakeCon when they announced it, and they just showed the logo, and then uh, and then I think Todd Holland was still there. He came out and was like, yeah, we're doing Doom, baby. And they quit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. Oh. Shut up. Fuck you. Doom is the best game ever made. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm most excited about, probably more than a Fallout 4, just because it's a known quantity. But uh, it looks like my group. Right? <laughs> oh, it's, like, yeah, it it's like a gene. I like that it's a gene projection projection machine. Yeah. This is the point where you just start aborting the baby. You just start punching the belly as hard as you can. Oh, just get a rock. Just. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's look good though. Look at that. Huh? Strong chain. I like that chain. So um, for the like reasons. Oh yeah. <laughs> for the reasons discussed on the no, uh, we're putting our bets down on them. Unveiling Fallout 4 with a new engine, new tech, that kind of thing, to harness the power of next gen. But really, I'm when I think about what a Fallout 4 might be, honestly, it's probably just going to be Fallout 3, but prettier. Really? Yeah, because after three years of work on it. Well, ultimately, I think it comes down to a sort of systemic nature of the game. Um, they have dev tools that allow them to make quests and make things like that. And to me, Fallout 3 felt kind of similar, and, and especially Skyrim felt similar to like a single-player MMO in terms of the way the quests work and things like that. It's pretty obvious that like the, the goal posting they have for NPCs and the triggers and stuff like that, it it works, but it also kind of all feels the same. <laughs> Let's play the damn game. Yeah, so move I am playing the game. Oh, move on. So regardless. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, it's a doctor, it's a Poor dude. It's a Fallout 3 it's a girl. Fallout 3 came in. Uh, Fallout 3 came out in 2008. Oh, her name is Dude though. Yeah, she's beautiful. Fallout 3 came out in 2008. Right? It did. 2008. So, uh, when, when did Skyrim come? 2011. November. Ah! Ooh, into 2011. Okay. Mangy. Mangy is what Why are we doing there, this? Yeah. Please, three. just pick one. Oh, that's good. And Lady Like, do that. Um, so it came out in 2011. So very possibly they could have been working on Fallout 4 at the very latest 2020. Yeah, because they were doing Skyrim DLC and all that kind of stuff. But I don't believe that. I think they've gotten they've had a team on it for a while. I, I think probably since Fallout 3 came out, they realized how successful that was and started a sequel, like any good studio. Mm -hmm. So they've been working on this game possibly since 2009, 2010, okay. around there. We've got about five years of development. Like you said, they're developing a brand new engine. Most likely, that makes the most, I would sense. Guess, yeah. it makes the most sense. So I hope it's not just a prettier Fallout 3. I mean, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why, why do you want anything different? My hope is that the, like, the level, uh, like the increase in game, in game, yeah. will be the same as between uh, Oblivion and Skyrim. Skyrim. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because like Morrowind and Oblivion were really similar. It felt like to me. What, what you thought? Man. Wait, no, I, I would say. I, I'm not challenging. I'm just surprised that. that I, would, I would say Oblivion was closer to Fallout because it was following each other. They basically use the. Right, that's, they, that's fair. I just Morrowind was. Franchise. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about the Skyrim jump. Oh, you're saying the jump? Yeah, oh, holy shit. Okay, yeah. I got that. Oh, yeah. To me, it felt like Morrowind to Oblivion was the biggest change, and then Oblivion to Skyrim was just kind of a, a refinement. Because right. Morrowind, I felt like, was still kind of a PC RPG. Like, the UI was really small, the inventory, the text was small, all the interface was kind of dependent on a mouse. And it was also really hard, and they didn't tell you where to go for most of the quests. Whereas in Oblivion, now you have, like, quest markers, a giant map, um, big old goofy, like, menu bars all over the place that make it look more like a console game. But between those, I think those were reactions to other RPGs that were out, and it's like, oh, these games have this, whereas Skyrim innovated a lot more so than Oblivion. Do you think Skyrim's the first person mod for Oblivion? Wait, what? But didn't Oblivion? Oblivion could be a first, first person. person. Oh, well, so then, can we hope that, what, what changed? I would, so, let's see, from Oblivion to Skyrim, I think the, the quest markers and the questing got a lot better. Uh, there's a lot more it's, content to the game. They have a lot of shit out. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. the simplification in the UI was, I thought, really elegant in Skyrim. Yeah, not really? yeah I, I agree with that. They, they uh, mainstreamed it for the unwatched masses like myself. Basically, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't feel like it was easy to, to navigate. I thought it was cool, but I didn't think it was easy to navigate that UI at all. It's yeah, it's, we, well, you probably played it on PC, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, PC I, I played on both. I played on PS3 and on PC. I could not have. 360 and PC. 360, I couldn't. I just couldn't stand all the buttons I had to hold down to navigate the UI. So I went to PC and I made it easy. But it still was sort of wonky. It always, it always, it always felt like a good broken game, like Assassin's Creed Unity. Yeah, that's like it was kind of broken, but it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the way it felt to me. I never, I didn't get into Skyrim much. You guys did, so. I did immersive RPGs like that. But when it came out, it's gotten a lot better since, but when it came out, like the, the mouse aiming was just bad. It was like really floaty and laggy. The interface was obviously tuned for console, so on a PC it just looked like everything was like a giant kid's book because yeah. everything was huge. There were mult
murders me because I would get into that game as you're supposed to, and like 45 minutes would go by and I wouldn't even realize it. And then it'd be like, there's a cool cave, and I'd walk in there and some ice giant would just be like, bam, and I'd be dead. Right. And then, uh, that's like part of the that's, world, but. I think that's a quality of life thing more. Like, yeah. I, I remember to say it because I've been burned by RPGs in the past. No, I have too. Yeah, so oh. for me, it's like, like, oh yeah, same. Well, look, yeah, that was the difficulty of the game, which I thought was cool, actually. I like that you could accidentally wander into an area and immediately die. I thought yeah. it was kind of fun. So. so do you think that the progression of simplifying the game, at least that seems to be a consensus, is going to carry over to Fallout 4? I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. It's gonna be even. It's just gonna be like a. It's weird because Todd Howard basically came out and said, you know, we don't want to do. We don't. We're not gonna make Doom. Obviously, whatever comes out is gonna be a linear shooter. But at the same time, they're like, they're gonna make an open world game. So, but how can they simplify Fallout more? Well, it would end up just being a first-person shooter. I, I I don't know if it's simple in terms of mechanics, but I think I think all the I think Skyrim basically struck a really perfect balance between being complicated in terms of stats and RPG system <laughs> and being accessible. Like anyone can just start wandering around and find cool stuff. True. Yeah. The crafting system I didn't really get into. That's but, I think like yeah, yeah, crafting and then just like the stat system is a little funky. Like you have to level up skills and then you level up, but you have to sleep to get your but you don't have to sleep in Skyrim, do you? You don't have to, but if you do, don't you get like rested a bit of time? Yeah, if you like break your leg and you take a nap, it heals itself. So like Morrowind, you would, you would like, it would be like, you hear a whisper from the, the mage council or whatever, and then you want to go to sleep to spend your stat points to level up. Oh, yeah, I know you're wrong. I love, I love how D&D Morrowind was. Like, you would have to jump to increase your jumping. Yeah. Like, Which like you just so bouncing annoying. all over the entire continent. It's so annoying, but it's also like, it, it makes it more like D&D to me. But I don't know, Skyrim's more fun. Well, so, right, so here's the question then. Uh, if they announce Fallout 4, uh, which is something like probably will. Um, what other game do you think it would be similar to? Like, what basically what developments and games now do you think Fallout 4 will use? Because Ooh, I'd like, question. like I, don't, I know Todd Howard is obviously working on some innovative parts uh, that will be brand new and things we've never seen before. But I'm sure there'll be other things that like, you know integrate from Assassin's Creed or integrate from Watch Dogs or whatever else into <laughs> into, uh, into Fallout. <laughs> what would uh, what's what, like she looks like Skeeter from Muppet Baby. <laughs> what, what would uh, what, what do you think Fallout 4 will have? Because I think we talked about more RPG and things like that. I've got a theory, okay. and this is what I hope is that New Vegas touched on this a little bit and Shadow of Mordor really, really made it real. But what I would like for there to be is a set of rules that govern the entire world, and then your actions, you can tell... Basically, I want, I want some kind of mechanic that overrides the entire world and changes it as you play it, as opposed to, you can go to this town and do this one quest line, and that quest line ends in one of two options, and based on what you pick, the town will either blow up or be there forever. I would rather be more like Shadow of Mordor, where it's like, there's this...